welcome back to live number five in honor of National Adoption Awareness Month. And tonight we have the lovely Sarah Anderson joining in. She's going to share her adoption journey and I can't wait for her to tell everyone. So once Sarah requests to join, we'll get started. Here she is. Waiting for Sarah. Hi. Hi, girl. How are you? Good. Of course, after I messaged you, it my internet was a little shoddy for a moment, but I think we'll be okay. Oh, okay. Um, but let me know if there's an issue or anything. Um, my Wi-Fi, the bar went down, like, Three bars to two bars, so okay. hopefully it's okay. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> How, is How are day? you? It was good. It was long, um, but it was good. It was, you know, a good Wednesday, two more days of the work week, so yes. I'm all right with that. Pump How was day. Yours? Yeah. It was good. It was good. I had to go into the office today. Okay. But <sighs> um, but I get done at like 3.30, so I feel like I have the good. whole rest of the day to myself. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hi. Oh, hey, Steph and Katie. I have hello, my hello, friend, Dina. Hi. Thanks for joining. Yes. And Trish has joined. Hello. I think we could get started, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sounds good to me. So um, introduce yourself and just yeah. tell us a little bit about you. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah, Sarah Anderson, and I am a transracial adoptee. So my parents are white. Um, I'm clearly black. And I was adopted as an infant uh, from Philadelphia. I currently live Woo in Philly. Yeah, Woo Philly. I still live in Philadelphia. Um, I was raised, though, in Lancaster. Um, I am an educator by profession. I currently, uh, I coach, uh, teachers in literacy for kindergarten to fifth grade. Um, I love the teachers that I work with. They're amazingly hard workers. Shout out to all teachers. Um, it's been a struggle being virtual for sure. Um, but yeah, so I am a, I'm 28 and for me, uh, honestly, I started talking about my adoption in a healthy public way um, mm -hmm. this summer. So being in this you. space and on Instagram is definitely new for me, but Thanks. happy to be here. Happy to find connection with other adoptees. Definitely, yes. Yeah. I'm so happy definitely. we uh, connected. Yeah, me too, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you're, you just started adoption underscore words, right? Um, yeah. Back in when? So the first post I made uh, was on July 28th. Um, okay. Yeah, it honestly, <laughs> the whole situation, um, I've always talked about my adoption to mm -hmm. people who know me. Um, I have always, to my, my adoptive family, I've always been um, pretty vocal about mm -hmm. my complex feelings and emotions around adoption. Um, but I felt like a lot of my friends and people who were in other spaces and not in my immediate family didn't fully understand uh, how I felt about adoption and often said things or asked me questions that, you know, they were tough to answer or required a lot more explanation than yes. was appropriate for when they asked mm -hmm. me. And so I was actually talking to a friend um, and she had all these questions and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like start a public space. And I said, maybe I should start an Instagram and, and post um, just thoughts and words yeah. about adoption that have been said to me or by me or, um... and so she said, yeah, absolutely. I'm excited, let's do it. And so when she said yes, I decided to do it. And then I found this space. Um, I didn't expect to have people read what I wrote at first. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so this has been quite a journey that I've been thrust into, but I am so thankful for it. Mm -hmm. um, quite a serendipitous journey, I guess, or a serendipi serendipitous uh, situation. It's a tough word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. That, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, so, we'll so we're loose. yeah, exactly. And I think it's going to go a long way. Thanks. <laughs> I really do. Um, Thanks. So just, so tell us how, um, so you were told at, at a very young age. Yeah. So when it comes to adoption, yeah, I was told at a young age, I always knew I was adopted. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I had baby books and such that were about adoption. So from the time I can remember, I knew I was adopted. Also having white parents, it, it's pretty right. clear that I, I didn't come from them. Right. <laughs> I'm the only person of color who is not married into our family. Um, or adopted. I have a third cousin who was adopted from Colombia in Norway. Okay. And I have my aunt is uh, Colombian. But other than that, we, there's, there's no no diversity there, no culture, yeah. really. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So um, I was definitely told, definitely an obvious thing. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up, I like I said, I talked about my adoption. I was angry very early. Um, mm -hmm. And my parents didn't really know what to do. Um, but I think for me, adoption has really been, I, when I was young, I understood that there was something not quite right about it. Mm -hmm. um, but society and my family told me, no, it's fine. This is your situation. And so I spent most of my life trying to diminish those feelings of and something not being them. right. Yeah. And downplay them and, yeah. and really bottle them up and just kind of figure out when not to say certain things. Um, but now I'm realizing how much how much damage that's done um, mm -hmm. to me and just even the relationships that I've had with different people and friendships and things like that. I noticed that um, the disconnection and just like the a lot of the struggles and the manifestations of my, you know, my primal wound, so to speak, um, they come out and, yeah. you know, they impact me. Um, I would like to be a mother uh, one day and I feel like I need to work on healing before I'm ready to to raise another human, you know? Yeah, and that's actually funny you said that because a lot of uh, girls who can come on the live and when that was part of their advice. Yeah. Is you need to heal first before you can start a family. Yeah, yeah. And I learned that, um, you know, growing up and through my experience as an adoptee, but I also... I also learned it through my experience as an educator right. and just seeing I've worked with hundreds of parents um, mm -hmm. and just seeing how a parent's trauma or a parent's struggle really can impact their child. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely yeah. part of the reason that I am here um, is mm -hmm. to learn and, and heal and, you know, grow so that I can be able to grow someone else. Yes. Yeah. So. Definitely. I'm so proud of you too for, Thank you. for sharing. <laughs> yeah. The big deal. Yeah, that was a really big deal. Um, I definitely wasn't going to post myself. Um, well, I remember I was talking page. before and you were like, yeah. and I was like, okay, send me a picture of yourself. And you're like, well, I want to <laughs> post something. So let me wait until I post. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, um, cool. yeah. I definitely initially, like I said, it was just meant to be a space where like, I don't know. I, I, it's I like a public friends, or... journal, I call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that yeah. is exactly what it was meant to be, but kind of an, not a fully anonymous, because right. I did tell my friends, I advertised it on my personal Instagram, but um, but definitely not meant to be, like, a place where I showcase my right. face and, like, you know, visual, showcase myself visually, but <laughs> You're show I think... Face. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> He's oh. creeping behind me right now. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> But um, but I definitely think that, you know, coming into this and, and meeting others, connecting with other adoptees, as well as connecting with other adoptive parents and people, um, realizing that sometimes having a face behind the work really, really does make an impact. Um, sure. And for myself, it it's pushed me to try and hold myself accountable um, for my work and what I'm doing and like keeps mm -hmm. me on track and pushes me to continue to process and think. Um, I, my posts are really a part of my healing process in a way, my writing. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like posting my posting my story, posting experiences. Once I put it out there, like I feel a little bit freer. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because so. we you bottle everything up sometimes inside, and then when you finally start to share things out loud, it just it's like it's relief. Yeah. Yeah. And then you start hearing other people who have similar stories or felt similar emotions yeah. you know, towards it. And it's just, it's comforting. Yeah. And that I think has been the most spectacular part of this experience is connecting with other adoptees who are like, yeah, me too. Like, oh, that, that's like, exactly oh, how I feel. Where are you my whole life? <laughs> yeah. No, literally that is, I've had so many experiences where I'm just like, Huh. So I'm not like I I'm not alone in this, and I'm not. I didn't like, think that all on my like, own. It's you mean these, yeah. these thoughts are valid. Yeah. yeah, and so it's 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 exactly that. It's validating, and yes. um, it's it's exactly what I need. I think at this yeah. moment in my in my life and and on my journey of life, um, and it's pushing me to yeah. continue working and growing myself. Um, For sure. Yeah. So. And I think that helps too. not just, you know, sharing your story is very helpful, but also connecting with people who yes. are um, understanding to your situation, who's kind of been through it or yeah. have the same emotions towards it. It's so comforting and mm -hmm. like it makes it it's part of healing. And like, that's what helps me like just watching yeah. a lot of people like their stories and it inspires me to want to speak out. Yeah. Talk, you know, just talk about how I'm feeling and talk about what happened and, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a yeah. lot of people joining on. Thank you guys. Oh, so yeah. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thank you for all your, your, um, your words. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Of course. And I see Indian late discovery is back. Yeah. Hey. Back. Hi. Um, awesome. so have you, um, found your birth family if this is mm -hmm. not something you want to talk share you don't have oh, to oh no yeah okay. um so i i have found my birth family um and that's so on my page the like blue posts those are all about reunion um so i am a, an adoptee in reunion so to speak um I, I feel like that word is just such a it's it's an interesting word that doesn't quite describe uh where I am with my birth family and what that dynamic looks like. Um, but yeah, 10 years ago, when, on my 18th birthday, um, I, so I had, my mom and I always, like I said, I spoke out a lot about my adoption. And so I told her very young, I am going to find my birth family, right? And so she always knew that this was an expectation I had. And this was something that um, I, I honestly expected her to support me in. Um, and thankfully she did. Um, so on my 18th birthday, she gave me a folder of a, um, of all of my adoption information and things that they had from the hospital. Um, my birth father actually had corresponded with us. He had written mm -hmm. letters, um, when I was a baby and when I was really young. So I had that stuff in there and I began the search. Um, I was using, you know, different resources. I did some like person searches and just yeah. typed the names of my birth family, um, of my birth mother and my birth father in. And then uh, in my folder, like I said, my birth father had sent letters. And so I ended up, there was a letterhead on the letters and I called, he worked at a recording studio and I called the recording okay. studio in Jamaica. Um, and, Jamaica, you know, rules wow. are different there. Yeah, rules are different. And as strange as it, as it is, even though the last time he had corresponded was, I believe, in 1996, um, they answered and they were like, well, he doesn't work here anymore, but here's his number. Wow. So I got his number and I uh, was able to make contact. And so through that, I called my birth father, got in contact with him. He ended up having me call my sister to get in contact with my birth mother in Connecticut. Um, but my sister got me in contact with another sister who then got me in contact with my birth mother. <laughs> and so I like talked to a lot of people starting with my birth father. That's it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even that moment of finding him, like I remember being on the phone and just, I remember saying like, my name is Sarah Anderson and I was adopted in 1992 and I think I'm your daughter. <laughs> and he was <laughs> like, yeah, like you're my daughter. Hi Sarah. And like, yeah, Aww. so it was a really cool moment. Um, that's a beautiful yeah. story. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, I'm an adoptee in reunion. Um, I have 
17 nieces and nephews. I have seven brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest. Um, so interesting dynamic there, an interesting um, experience being the youngest um, because my siblings, they do welcome me, but they see me as, a, as the baby. Um, <laughs> and so that's been different in my adoptive family. I'm the oldest. So it's quite a different dynamic. Oh, okay. um, and all yeah. your uh, biological brothers and sisters, are they all, um, are they at all any half or are they? Yeah, all? so all of them. So unfortunately, my uh, birth brother, my biological brother, um, who was my full brother, he actually passed away um, eight months oh, after so I sorry. met him. Um, thank you. Honestly, I look at it as I'm, if, if I had waited, I never would have met my brother like my full 100 percent biological brother and so i'm thankful that for the time that mm -hmm. i had with him because there are so many things that oh my gosh we were so similar um and really? just you know even talking on the phone um did i freeze you did just gonna... we were good for a while <laughs> You're still um, freezing a little bit. I'm sorry guys stay on okay i think she's probably gonna come back can you all still hear me let me know please okay good good thank you thank you both um, we were good for a while. Okay, she's back. Waiting for Sarah to come back. Okay, let's hope this continue. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Hopefully this continues to work. Sorry about that. Pause I don't know what's going on. Uh oh. Did you hear me? No, what did you say? Are you in a closet or something? You look like no. you're in like a... Oh, no, no, no. I'm that? actually, there's my bookcase and then I have like plants and like, no, there's a closet like behind me. Um, I thought I saw the door and it, it was like, you look oh, like you're like... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like angled a little bit this way instead of like to the, the larger room. But uh, okay. yeah, sorry about that. Oh, hi, That's Olive. Okay. How are you? Um, Awesome. I don't know where I was. That's another thing about me. I have ADHD and so... I just oh. own that, um, but it means a lot of things, but also sometimes I forget, and so I need a reminder. <laughs> so we were talking about your brother, that you were just so blessed to yes. have been yes, able yes, to yes. spend time with him. Yeah, um, yeah. So I or think talk I, to him. Right. I think I told the story of, you know, his situation and, and how he passed and all that, um, but he was really similar to me, and so I'm thankful that I got to meet him, um, even from the first time thanks for the plant compliment. Um, <laughs> what, the first time that I spoke to him was on the phone. Um, and it was just, it was crazy because there were things that I like that he was into or that I would say, and like something he would like, is like, well, I can't keep my room clean. And that's like been my biggest, like, it, and it's, it's like not a, oh, I just, you know, don't clean it, whatever. It's like, no, like, I can't keep it clean. Like, it's been the bane of my existence. And for <laughs> him to say that as one of the first things, um, I was That's just funny. like, oh, my God, we're related. Like, absolutely. He's like, yeah. Like, it was like an instant connection clean. right there. Yeah, like, so many instant connections. And just even just some of our interests and the way that we thought about certain things. Um, 
it was cool. And so I did get to meet him a few times um, and, ha and spend time with him. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, but yes, he, he passed. And so the time I had with him is over. Um, but those memories are there. And, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Like, this is life. This is sometimes how it works. Yeah, it is really weird, though, the shared behaviors and patterns, for sure. Um, I, I don't, I mean, of course, I saw it between my brother and my adoptive family. Um, he is not adopted. And so I did see that was my next question is any yeah. of your si biological siblings adopted? Yeah, so um, my biological siblings were not adopted. Um, they were so okay. Some of them lived with my mother um, and were raised by her, but others, it was more of a kinship adoption. So um, okay. it's very common in the Caribbean. I'm Jamaican, like I said, uh, it's very common in the Caribbean for families to, if they're struggling, you go live with grandma or you go live with aunt or uncle or whomever it is. Um, and so that larger extended family is very, very common. Um, and still is like when I go to my birth family, um, most of the, of my siblings' homes and my parents' homes, they're multi-generational. Um, okay. And so it, it's very common for that. Part of the reason I was adopted is because my mother came to the United States. She immigrated here and she didn't know she was pregnant. Um, but because of she had fears about sending me back to Jamaica and also couldn't raise me here. She had my brother with her. Mm -hmm. um, he was almost two at the time. And so that played a big role um, in my adoption. Um, but my family, the rest of my uh, birth family didn't want me to be adopted. My father did not want me to be adopted. He did not know that I existed until I was a year old. Um, so none of them were officially adopted and they're all back in contact with my mom and like, you know, stop by the house, things like that. Um, oh, nice. yeah, but in my adoptive family, every, so I have two brothers. I have a ha technically a half brother. Um, my dad got remarried, and so he has a child. Um, and then my adoptive brother, who I grew up with, is two years younger okay. than me, and he is not adopted. So yeah, okay. yeah. And has your adoptive Hi, family? Oh, I'm all... sorry. <laughs> sorry, to interrupt. Hi, Shadi. That's okay. Hi, Shadi. Um, has your biological family and your adoptive family, have they at all seen each other? Have they talked to yeah, each other? Yeah, that's interesting. So my, my adoptive mother is much more open to the idea of me having two families and to the, the fact that I am adopted. Um, I, am not, I am not her biological child. I have another family. I have another um I have a past that and a story that is not linked to hers. And so right. she recognizes that. And after I met my birth family, she actually started sending my birth mother like Christmas cards. And Aww, I never so read sweet. them. Yeah, I never read them. My mom likes to write. So they were like notes. Um, I don't yeah. know if my birth mother ever wrote back. Um, mm -hmm. Language is definitely a barrier at times, but also right. just there's some trauma there too. Um, so I don't know if she wrote back, but I do know that my adoptive mother definitely respects and understands the importance of my birth mother. Um, and that's they, amazing. Yeah. They met each other once. Um, they, it, it wasn't like a big meeting and like, you know, reunion. Uh, my mother actually, she was, they live in Connecticut. My mom was driving to visit a friend in Vermont. And she was like, Oh, like, rather than taking the train, why don't you drive with me? So my adoptive mother met my birth mother, like from the car. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I was like, all right, see you mom. And then, you know, my <laughs> birth mother came out and like said hi and all of that. But other than that, it, they haven't necessarily met. But I, I don't know, my, I feel like they're connected in a way. Um, yeah. my birth mother will ask about my adoptive mother. My adoptive mother asks about my birth mother. Um, but there's still that separation. And so I'm the middle man. Yeah. Um, some other members of my birth family, not my birth mother, but some of my siblings. Um, I met my birth family, my senior year of high school, and mm -hmm. I went up and met them on spring break. And so I, my graduation was that year and I invited them to a graduation party. So few nieces and nephews and some brothers and sisters um, all came down to see me and they met a number of like my extended adoptive family so that was pretty cool 
Uh, but that was the only time uh, that we've had like in-person communication right. and interaction. So yeah. Um, there's more time we can have Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know if I, I'm still like, there's a lot of, um, there's cultural differences as well as mm -hmm. class differences, um, which I think can play a big role of how different parties view each other. And so I want to make sure, first and foremost, I want my birth family to be comfortable with my adoptive family. Um, and I want them to want to be a part of and like be accepted. I don't want it to mm -hmm. be a situation where like my adoptive family has the idea of like they're better, or, like we can't relate to these people or, you know, right. things like that. Um, but definitely, definitely yeah. there is more time. <laughs> and you want it vice versa. You just want like, you just want peace. Yeah. For both, both sides. Absolutely. Which yeah. I mean, but in families and relationships, there will always be. And that's any, you know, that's any, exactly. bringing families together when you get married and like, yep. you're going to bring their other family and, yep. and it's, you just Absolutely. have to like, respect is the biggest thing too. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you're not going to all agree with each other, but you just have to respect each other and yeah and you are their priority yeah absolutely you're the one thing they all have in common which honestly has been it has been a theme in my adoption and i do appreciate that um hi, hi i am Jay. adopted hi um yeah i definitely am the commonality yeah yeah you are for sure and that's a good thing though it's it is it, it is amazing. a good thing for sure i think it can also be pressure though right like that idea of you know, yeah. I didn't ask to have two families, um, but I am I am put in a position where I now have to kind of manage the relationships with two families. Um, I've actually but you have so much lot. more love too. Yeah, it is more love. It is certainly yeah. more love. Um, definitely, definitely more love. Um, yeah, I have four set or two sets of parents calling me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, but yeah, nice. That's awesome. So much pressure, even when beauty is present too. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. um, have did you ever experience any bullying growing up, like mm -hmm. in school, like being at, um, you know, your parents were white, you yeah. black. So, I mean, I know that I was definitely bullied, but I wasn't in your situation. Yeah. Um, I was definitely bullied. Um, it didn't actually start though until I was in middle school um when I and middle to, school is considered oh so like sixth grade I guess I was sixth grade, right okay. yes or seventh grade really seventh grade I was like what was that like 13 um and so 12, yeah. yeah 12 13 and I I definitely so I went to an all-girls school um at that mm -hmm. time it was my first year there there were girls there. It was, an, it was an amazing place. There were girls from all over the world. Um, some students lived there. It was a boarding school, but I commuted. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was really interesting experience. By the time I left, there were actually girls from 13 different countries. Um, so wow. I, I had an amazing cultural experience, which I so, so appreciate. Um, I didn't at the time, but I do now. Um, right. But I... I was not like the other black students who went to, to my school. And so they would call me out as being different. Um, I also had white friends who would notice that I am different from my black friends and call me out the same way. So I was called Oreo by everybody. Um, oh gosh. It, yeah. It was How interesting, right? Yeah, exactly, right. Um, it's interesting because the school that I went to did not do any work at all um, around identity and around um, racism and biases and all of that stuff. But we had mm -hmm. all of these girls who were teenagers in living together. And so there were a lot of... Um, there were a lot of racial complexities and prejudices and I wasn't the only one who was being called out for being like out of my stereotypical box, right? I wasn't the only one. Um, and yes, it is harmful, definitely. Yeah, so harmful. Um, but I definitely look back and I, I don't know. The bullying for me was something that was 
I don't know, when I think about like how it affected me, mm-hmm. I knew I was different. So I guess for me, like being called an Oreo was like, no, nah, like I, I really am. And it, it opened up that idea of like, yeah, this is why I'm different. And like, this is, this is kind of a problem with me. Um, but like I said, I, I always knew I was different. And I always knew that I, you know, had a birth family, and I needed to find my mother and mm-hmm. all of those things. So while I was being called Oreo, um, it affected my identity as a black woman in America. Right. And so that I think is the biggest damage that, that the bullying did is that I became not afraid, but I became timid around black people. Um, yeah, not Caribbean people or Jamaican people, because that was something that pride and I posted actually today about it, but that pride was instilled in me as a child by my adoptive, my white adoptive parents. But in terms of relating with black people who maybe weren't of Caribbean descent, um, Mm -hmm. but who were of American descent, that was really hard for me. And so, yeah, that's what I connect my bullying to is really just the struggle of connecting to my identity in America as a black person. um, And what that means. Yeah, it did a lot. And it wasn't even about the bullies. It was more of like you, like how you took it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It did more damage how you felt rather than what they said. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, really interesting. I don't know. My middle school and high school experience, I'm so grateful for it. It opened my eyes to a lot of things. And even as an adult, there are things that were happening or or ideas that I explored when I was in middle Mm -hmm. and high school, especially around diversity and, um, you know, just seeing other people as people. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Yep. Yeah, so to school, did you you say anything to anybody to the school? So that's the thing, it was public. Like it was very much, people knew um and but they chose not to address it right right and i think it was that they did not know how to address it and so it was the idea of colorblindness right Mm -hmm. um describing my experience in middle and high school is hard because people who weren't there think it it was this horrible place or whatever it is um but we created our own community and so i i say that i was bullied but some of those same bullies are some of our people who I cherish um, and who I have close bonds with. And like you said, it's, it's not necessarily about what was said or who said it. It was really about how those words affected me in that moment. Um, I've learned a lot from it, but I've also, I, I'm an outspoken person. And so I've also challenged them on it, right? Like I sat with it, but I also was like, well, listen, it's not my fault. Um, so that definitely and that's a yeah. great way to look at it too yeah which and that always was my thing with adoption is like I completely understood why people would say like you're different you're not like us um and even into my career mm-hmm. people have called me out I worked in an African-centered school so uh which that that's a whole nother conversation um but anyway <laughs> working there all of the staff were black and all of the students were black and that was part mm-hmm. of the culture and it was amazing and it did wonders for my identity um highly recommend to work at an african-centered school if you are a black transracial adoptee um it will change your life um but i was called white teacher there right like like i had co-workers who called me white teacher and i had to say i don't know what that means right right well but the (sighs) thing is like you don't know what it means but it's like you do Right, like yeah, you, I was just gonna say, like, you do and you don't. It's just one right. of those things where it's like, <laughs> exactly. And there's so much wrapped up in it because it it acknowledges like that like power and privilege dynamic and the class dynamic and the fact that mm-hmm. I there were coworkers that I had who they heard me talk and thought it was a joke. Um, and they, you know, months later, I had a coworker who was like, yeah. So when I first met you, I thought that you were putting on a on an accent or whatever. Like you were. I was like, no, no. No, this is this no, is who this I am every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that for me was when I really was like, wow, I am a different person, but I I can I can try and be part of these people. Um No, but, you gotta embrace it. Right, right. You're, so yeah. 
<sighs> goodness. So bullying all over. But like you said, it's how I have reacted to it. Um, ha has it hurt me? Absolutely. Um, sure. I cannot deny that. Yeah. There are some things that are just plain wrong, right? Like being called white teacher at a, a yeah. at school in front of parents and te uh, parents, coworkers, and students. Because um, nobody realizes the words, like how it affects the person, and not yeah. just in that moment. Like you think they're just gonna like you're gonna laugh about it, and then you're gonna go home, and they're gonna be. Okay. And that. Was but it. the person yeah. you said it to is gonna carry that for the rest of their life. Right. You know. Right. But uh -huh. you're going to find people, I, oh my gosh, the love that is going on right now. Yeah. I see so Thank many you guys. Going Thank, you. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, you're always going to have bullies at any age and no one's going to, everyone's going to have something to say about someone, yeah. but you know what? You just got to like say, screw you. I am who I am. You're not going to define me. I define myself yeah. and you don't, and that's what I just put up a post today. Is you might, you know my name, but you don't know my story. You saw how I got there, but you didn't, exactly. or you saw that I got there, but you didn't see how I got there. So exactly. Don't, don't judge. Just. Right. Right. Or if yeah. you want to ask, like, get to know me and ask me about how exactly. I got there. Look, like, understand right. rather than judge, exactly. try to understand my situation. Yes. Katie. Katie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punching people in the face for sure. <laughs> Definitely Sometimes have it helps. felt that. Definitely <laughs> have felt that for sure. <laughs> Haven't done it yet. Haven't, you know, but. Definitely have felt that. Um, and also just like not wanting to explain. So that's something that I, I've learned is, you know, like, I am who I am. And you can think what you want about me. Um, exactly. I learned that from my brother, uh, my adoptive brother doesn't tell people I'm adopted. Um, so they'll see pictures of us and things like that. And they'll be like, is she adopted? Is she is she related yeah. to you? And he just says, she's my sister. Like, what's your problem? She's my sister. And doesn't right. he doesn't care. Um, so I learned that I don't have to tell everybody about my story. Um, mm -hmm. People can think what they want. And it's it's really about how I go about my business and my life. Exactly. And, yeah, like you said. So yeah, yeah, which you're right. That's Police amazing. Everywhere. Oh. You are so inspirational. I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love everything you're saying. Oh, thanks. There's such an element there of not being what people want to expect from you rather than seeing you and I mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen to that. Yes. A hundred percent. So um, I don't want to keep everyone, you know, too much longer because we all want to go, maybe go lay down. We had a long day. <laughs> yes. Um, so I want to ask you, what does adoption mean to you? In just a few words, because mm -hmm. I'm really loving the answers I'm getting from, from people. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um. <laughs> If you so, want to think on that, I can go to the next question, the last question, but if you're ready. You yeah, no, I guess for me, it's, there's, to me, adoption means two things, right? So there's the mm -hmm. definition of adoption and, and to me, adoption is maternal separation and trauma or family separation and trauma. Um, but I think there's also what does adoption mean to me as Sarah, right? Like as this person who mm -hmm. I am, um, I think adoption for me means learning to learning to connect with others as an, as like a lifelong journey like that for me is what adoption has been it's like this process of learning to connect with other people um yeah while also like trying to find me that's what adoption has been and self-healing yeah, absolutely. well, yeah. And I think for me, that's what it's becoming. I didn't know that, right? Until this summer, I thought I was good. I thought I was at the top of my game. Um, I was, I don't know, I didn't know what was, I knew there was something wrong and something missing. And I told my therapist, I was like, there's something that's not right about me. There's something that I don't feel, I don't think I'm feeling the way other people are feeling is what I told her. Um, yeah, but, and that's how I felt growing up my whole life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it wasn't until, you know, coming to joining the adoption community and like finding other adoptees and having that connection that I learned. I think like, v Steph is leaving. So I don't want to, I want to say thanks oh, okay. so much for sharing your story. This was a great chat. Thank you so much. If you're staying on, I'm glad if you're leaving, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yes. I um, love, thank you for your support tonight. Um, yeah. But no, thank continue. you everyone. Yeah. Thank up to hearts. You. I love it. I now know. Now they're just doing thank it on you. purpose. <laughs> 
Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So I like that. I, I really like that. So what I'm actually going to do, Just Girl Project, hi. hi. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing is I'm going to make a post for every person, who's come, every woman who's come on live with me and um, make a post of what they define awesome. adoption, yeah. what adoption meant to them. So that's why I want to get all that. Um, nice. My, my yeah. next one is next week, and then I'll send them out at the end of the month, and I'll tag you in them. But awesome. Um, cool. So the I very last question, and yeah. Um, so what advice would you give other adoptees, and what advice would you give to adopters? Yeah, so to other adoptees, um, the advice I would give is is to find connection. Um, that's my biggest advice is like find connection and find the people that you that you feel connected to. Um, I think that's hard advice, right? Because that's what we're all already, I think, doing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think also lean in on that community or not lean in, but lean on that adoptee community that hopefully you find and, and create because I think that for me, at least, meeting other people who were adopted and connecting with them on that level mm -hmm. has been very different than connecting to people, other people of my race, or even other people of my culture, or even other people, right. Of my, right, like where I'm from, or whatever it is, but my adoption, my, I don't know, I, I don't like to say my adoption identity, but it is, right, it's part of my identity. It is, identity. It absolutely, it's who um, we are. But, yeah. Adoption my, is our, part of our lives. It, it, right, it, it's right. Us. Absolutely. So my yeah. adoption identity really does, um, I don't know, change that. But yeah, I definitely say find, find connection and continue working, continue, continue the work to heal. Um, you're not alone in this. And yeah. yeah, find that connection. That's been my biggest thing. That's the advice I give. And then to oh, people who are looking to adopt or who have adopted, um, my biggest advice, advice is to learn from adoptees, 100%. Um, learn and listen to adoptees, mm -hmm. not just not just listen to say you listened, but listen and sit with it and think about it. Mm -hmm. And if you are questioning whether it makes sense to adopt, question it. Be, like lean mm -hmm. into that piece because adoption is adoption is traumatic and it is not yes. just it is not just another way to make a family right like my family my my biological family and that connection I have with my mother was broken mm -hmm. and yes I did join your family but that wasn't a happy thing for me that wasn't something I had a choice in and so I hope that people who hope to adopt really do listen and learn from those yeah. who have already been adopted um, and sit with those feelings and just, you know, the idea that adoption is a profitable business. It's a beautiful it is, trauma, it, I call it. Yeah. I mean, you know, there is beauty in it. Um, but I yeah. think there's and beauty there's in, in parenting and there's beauty in growing up and there's beauty in all mm -hmm. of that. But I think the actual core of adoption is, you know, that maternal separation and gaining new parents. I don't know. Right. That for me is tricky. That's tough. There's, it's a whole there's new layers world to that. Past. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I love yeah. that. You have said so much, so many beautiful things tonight. Um, well, thanks. <laughs> it's great to talk to you. You too. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the message to adoptees, just know like your feelings are valid. You know, you could have, I, I constantly say this, but I can't say it enough to people. I really want people to understand is you can have mixed feelings. You can yeah. be happy and you can mm -hmm. be sad about it. Um, you can feel like you don't, you know, you don't have, like you have like this connection with your adopted family, but yeah, that doesn't mean that you don't love them. Right. Um, you have the right to go search for your identity, go search for your birth family without feeling like you're, um, like feel ashamed that you're betraying. Right, you're, you're not. Betraying. You are finding and who you are. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, just you matter. Your story Absolutely. matters. And if anyone who's listening wants to share their story and come on with me, message me anytime. I'm here. And um, that's pretty much the message I have is you're enough. Your yeah. story matters. Yeah. So... Well, thank you all so much for the people who just joined. I'm so sorry we're actually done, but <laughs> thank you anyway. And for yeah. everyone who's showed so much love tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We so thank appreciate everyone. it. Um, have a good night, Sarah.
Thank you. You too. See ya. Bye. Bye.